Good morning, everyone. Sam here. Hope everyone is doing uh, very well. You should be able to see the screen and sound should be coming through fine. Let's get started here. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Sam here. Hope everyone is doing uh, very well. All right, there we go. Sorry, had a little challenge, but I think we're good to go now. Uh, you should be able to hear and see the screen. Yeah, James, I'm uh, I'm with you there, but um, yeah, I I you know we absolutely uh, absolutely did, and um, you know I, I figured there'd be some questions or comments about uh, you know why we're here and what we're doing and moving on and all that, and I completely get it. Uh, very very mixed emotions and uh, you know sad period uh, for me for sure. If there was any way I could have remained at OTA, I absolutely would have. Um, and people have no idea what's been going on uh, for quite a while with um, the whole situation. And we can't get into that right now. You know, but with news I got uh, about three weeks ago, there are the circumstances required me to move in a different direction. So um, again, probably, you know, for a couple of reasons, not, now is not the time to address that, but it should be addressed, and it will. And um, but uh, believe me, I am. Uh, words can't describe what's been going on in my head and uh, for a while, and and especially now. So, um, but my focus and passion is always, you know, you know what Jasmine and I do together, and for you. And so uh, we thought this is uh, this is a way to keep keep this going for right now, and as long as we stick to that, survive, and because the fire inside us inside us continues to burn stronger than the fire around us. Yeah, you know, I can tell you, uh, you know, I am. Um, it's all about being fearless in pursuit of truth, integrity, and everything else that sets your soul on fire. And that's exactly um, what's going on here. And as you can tell with my stuttering, this is not a scripted message. It's the truth. Um, and there's a lot more uh, that people don't know. So I am 1,000% of uh, just keep pushing for that and towards that truth. And um, rest assured, as most of you know in life, that will all over time come out and everything will end up as it should. All right. And um, let's keep going. All right. So I want to start out with um, I want to start out with the screenshot that you see here, just to help you, you know, um, understand. <clears throat> and uh, you know, the core of what we're of what uh, we do here, the core of the message, and it's really. Uh, all about supply and demand, right? How the markets really work. So let me just tell you though how this how this session will go. Okay. So I'll go over. I want to go over what you see on the screen right now. Uh, I'll try to do it fairly quickly, but I want to make sure you understand. Next, we will go over um, our little market prep that Jasmine usually covers, and then I will turn it over to Jasmine, and she'll walk you through the markets, and you'll see uh, all about that plan. All right. Okay. So if you look at the screen, again, the premise here is that the movement of price in any and all markets is a function of an ongoing supply and demand relationship. Right? Low risk, high reward, and high probability opportunity is present when that simple and straightforward equation 
is out of balance. Does that make sense? Where are we all on the same page with that? If so, then we have to back up and just understand the two questions that matter. Where will price turn and where will it go? Any market, uh, any time frame, day trading, uh, swing trading, long-term position trading, and so on. Okay. And if you're in pursuit of answering those questions and a razor sharp focus on those two questions, we realize that unfilled orders or supply and demand cause prices to turn in a market and filled orders, okay, which is a lack of supply and demand, allow for price movement. In other words, if there's, if there's a lack of supply and demand, there's less to keep prices from moving right? The bigger the imbalance, the more likely the turn in price. So if you look at the stick figures on the left, these represent supply, demand, and relative balance. Now notice I don't call that equilibrium. Why not? Because uh, there's never, it, it's never equal. Even if price is not moving up or down, it's not an equal equation behind the scenes. It's always an unbalanced equation that takes a certain period of time, you know, to play out. Right, and you you'll you probably see that when you're when you're trading. I saw that first hand on a trading floor many years ago. That's where this whole strategy comes from, and um, I am just the messenger, and Jasmine are just you know we're the messengers here for you. So take a look uh, at the screen. Um, the stick figures, make sure you understand, represent supply and demand. But when we look at the chart over on the right, those two charts, what do the candles on, represent or lines or bars or ticks, whatever type of chart you have, what does the chart represent? Right, the chart represents filled orders, right? When a trade happens, we get a print on the screen. So the chart represents filled orders. The stick figures represent supply and demand or unfilled orders. So if you think about it, not only just does the chart not show us what we need to see. It shows us the opposite picture of what we need to see. I see someone saying BW's in the house. I assume that's Brandon Wendell. How you doing, Brandon? Anyway, let's keep going. So again, not only do the charts not show us what we need to see, but they show us the opposite picture of what we need to see. We need to look at a price chart that shows us filled orders and figure out where the significant unfilled orders are, that, that significant supply and demand. Big orders from banks and financial institutions, the smart money, like I saw firsthand and dealt with on a trading floor, all right? That's what causes prices to turn and move, okay? So how do we do that? Well, the picture again is opposite. So what I thought, uh, what I grabbed here was, this is a screenshot from one of Jasmine's sessions. This is a supply zone uh, that uh, probably you folks um, um, were in this session. Some of you folks were in this session. And there was a supply zone. This is from uh, a little ways back. Now look at the, look at the supply zone there. Uh, in fact, right here where I'm pointing on the chart, see the two little circled areas? And if you're thinking to yourself, wow, these are so small, I can hardly see them. Why are they so small? Why is there so little, such little trading in those two circled areas that make up that one supply zone on the chart um, in the middle of the screen here? Right? Why is there such little trading there? It's because supply and demand is so out of balance. The more out of balance supply and demand is, right, the, the less tr actual trading activity you're going to get. Now, if we look at the picture in the middle, I'm looking at the live trade setup here. If we look at the, the, uh, the gray shaded area on the chart, look at all of the trading activity in that area. Tons and tons of trading activity, especially when you compare it to the actual supply zone, right? Tons of trading activity. What does that picture represent? That picture represents filled orders or a lack of significant supply and demand, right? Okay, so if 
unfilled orders cause prices to turn and we see unfilled orders supply you know on a price chart looks like that right very few trades that actually took place now i say that up here let me let me back up a little bit this supply zone up here you know i say that supply exceeds demand here but how do, how can we be so sure and of course there's not a hundred percent certainty with any of this right any type of trading and investing anytime we put money out there in any kind of investment at the end of the day it's a guess so we want to make the most educated guess we can based on the most objective information inside an objective strategy right a set of rules so but how can i say that with with such kind of certainty even though it's not 100 percent certainty because if supply and demand at the supply zone was in relative balance or equal wouldn't price just keep trading sideways here it would but it couldn't why because this supply zone is up somewhere near these red red guys up here right guys girls figures we need to come up with a name for these uh these little people okay competition to sell there's so much competition to sell in the supply zone you hardly get any trading price drops now the fact that price can trade up and down in this gray shaded box so much so long so much volume all that suggests that uh, there's a lack of significant supply and demand if there was a big supply and demand imbalance in this gray shaded area you wouldn't get all this trading wouldn't happen right you get very little trading and price would shoot away but you did that suggests price is somewhere in the middle here okay. now tomorrow we're going to take this whole concept a step further but um, wanted to make sure you had kind of the basics of this today so again the supply zone our red stick figures here right unfilled orders cause prices to turn the gray shaded area with all of the trading activity that we see represents a lack of supply and demand or relative balance right that facilitates or helps prices move makes it easy for prices move yeah i saw someone say this uh, the uh, stove snowplow effect absolutely i don't know if people in florida will understand that no i'm just kidding okay uh, over on the right the results so how that uh, opportunity played out in the market price shot up uh, to the supply zone okay so up here right to put the final pieces on this we had people buying here and people selling but again if you're kind of new to this ask yourself who is buying who is selling okay now we're never going to know their name or their address or anything like that but when we focus on the actions is it the actions of a smart buyer and seller of anything or not okay so exactly the buyers here when price came back to this area are buying after a rally in price and into a price level where the chart already suggested supply greatly exceeds demand up here and i wanted to put these you know we wanted to put these start to put these two pictures together to really help you think the markets the right way that's the key in this in the beginning once you can think the markets the right way the rules make sense and the rules are not in conflict with your thoughts and that's one of the biggest reasons people say well I understand the rules but but I, I you know executing them is a uh, is, is a challenge you know um, you know if I, if I if I only took all the trades that I put out there I would have done so well right people struggle with themselves is because it's got to start with how you think the markets right thoughts control our actions we all know that okay so we're gonna take this concept two steps deeper tomorrow but I think that's enough for right now and we definitely want to get to Jasmine quick here and uh, but let's go over our little prep so a couple things to talk about here Fed fund futures are pricing in negative rates over the next 12 months uh, Powell is saying uh, suggesting that the COVID impacts will last deep into 2021 which suggests more stimulus states and count countries and counties uh, are slowly starting to open up again there's vaccines that are on the horizon all this equates to fairly good news for the stock market right I think we would all agree with that okay I think we'd all agree with that um, and the stock market has rallied no question about it um, but 
remember what 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 gets prices to go what causes prices to go higher are more buyers right so with all this news out there all this news just building up that's good and for stock markets and markets are rallying um prices ca have come up to if we start with this 30 minute chart <clears throat> well the question the question i was going to ask is if if things are that great why aren't prices well above um this 60 minute supply zone yet and i'm not saying things aren't great remember the reality of of what's going on in the world and how prices move in markets are very inversely related we're going to chat about that tomorrow okay but um so make no mistake about it the markets are up uh and they're up nicely off one of our supply zones from last week if uh if you're in those sessions but um but what they are reaching so the 60 minute supply zone up here 2940 that was uh that was last monday and um some of you may have may have captured that the um but inside this drop we're hitting two levels that are inside of this area and what do we call this area up here this this area that i'm circling what is that what does that represent okay hint what does this all this trading activity represent okay all right i think you know the answer but um yes so you know tomorrow the focus is going to be structure and location okay and a little bit more there's another thing we're going to add to that but so while these two supply zones that i'm sharing with you here on the 30 minute chart these are both lower than this 2940 supply so they're inside this can they work sure they can work but just remember they're a little bit lower probability especially this lower one um and um you know they're inside this okay i think prices are kind of sitting in this upper one at the moment and uh, but remember both of these levels are sitting on inside this a move uh deeper into the 60 minute s p zone uh, above last monday's high that's would put us into some fresh territory and even this level is is just a pivot high you know the the, the significant levels are just a little bit higher all right. So when we look at all the good news out there for the stock market, okay. And remember, markets anticipate all that news. They move so so far in front of the actual, you know, news and all that, right? Like those March lows um make sense? Okay. Now, another thing I wanted to share with you here, look at the Nikkei and DAX. These are daily charts over here on the right. So now these are weaker markets, obviously much weaker than the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is the strongest, right? S&P, Dow, uh, a little bit behind that. Russell kind of behind that. And of course, these two are, are the weaker ones. So no question about that. However, they have some significant supply zones on a large significant time frame, like the daily chart here, okay? So uh, keep that in mind. The likelihood of all these markets you know, moving to new all-time highs in the near future is not likely with uh, this overhead supply above and the fact that we're now uh, a ways away from some demand. Does that make sense? And, you know, for those of you that have been with me, the way that we played, you know, the March, uh, you know, the March lows, that this is the same concept with news and, and price. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out and we want to make sure that we focus on the fresh quality supply demand levels one more thing i want to share with you and then i'll turn it over to jasmine here so you're going to see different uh different things on the charts you're going to see yellow boxes you're going to see yellow circles white circles blue circles and there's actually two new ones we've added to this <clears throat> and so you're going to see an updated guide uh tomorrow we're going to add an updated guide to this and the purpose of this is for you to understand the difference between the supply and demand zones that you see in a chart. Because here's the thing, structure wise, you could have five zones that look absolutely identical, but one or two of those could be much higher probability than, than the others, right? You have to location, how fresh it is, all that stuff is, is the key. Does that make sense? Okay. So I want to make sure that you thoroughly understand that. So this will, you know, hopefully help guide you to 
those high probability levels, this guide will, and then um, and then it'll also help you understand. That was the whole goal. All right, it's uh, great to be with you, and I know these are challenging and confusing circumstances, um, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, I explained that kind of in the beginning. I probably shouldn't go back and repeat all that. Um, I think this session is being recorded. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, Jasmine, who is absolutely amazing, and um, great to be back connected with her doing, uh, doing sessions and doing sessions for you, most importantly. Thanks, everyone. Hi. Thanks, Sam, for that help, heartfelt speech at the beginning. I'm sure everyone is so happy to have you back here with us because if it wasn't for you, none of us would be here. So, all right, let's get into the charts. And you should be seeing, I have the DAX up first. I figure we'll start a little bit with Europe. Sam did give you a little bit of a rundown of uh, what has been going on. Just waiting for a little, hopefully it comes up a little, a little bit. Okay, here we go. All right, so the DAX has been the weaker market in general. It gave you the, the daily uh, zones of them so you know that they are still above. For right now, let's go take a look what has been happening in general. So with all the good news overnight, we are having a continued uh, rally up in price where you can see the next fresh uh, 60 minute is really coming in at the 11.062 to the 11.148 with the daily, of course, still higher, which is still a possibility that we move there. You are forming some new demands you can see close by even right uh, down below at the current moment, right on this rally back up. And also some new demand also at the uh, 10,340 to the 10,292. Uh, and the reason why I keep a watch on this market because it, since it is the weaker market, you can see if it has strength, it can give us even more strength in the US markets. There is another level It's going to be approaching that's uh, this would consider to be one that I would consider if when we start to do the new session guy, more of that uh, brown color. And I do have a. OK, so you can see that this is inside this supply level is inside of coming off of this move already. So that's coming in at the 10,933 to the 10,984, uh, right? So that is going to be hitting it. What? So for today, I believe with all the good news and all, it's definitely a market continuing to rally. I was looking for some supply zones possibly by the open that can yeah, since we are going to have some open gaps uh, down below in most of these markets. But for right now, uh, uh, these look like they're getting up there a little bit quicker uh, than at the open because we still got another hour to go before the open. Um, so anyway, let's go take a look at the S&P. All right, so like Sam was talking about before, um, these levels, so these are the ones that you can see we've already went through the very highs of it because you can see the ones in brown because of where this is located. If we take a look at the daily, right? If we take a look at the daily, we have hidden back down into some daily demand and now coming back up here. So you can see where these levels are located. They're located right inside of here. So really not any, any kind of fresh areas in terms of uh, where where we are in the bigger picture. What we will have though is uh, higher up. The, the fresh level is really coming in closer to the 32, six, 
3216-3267. On the 60 minute, we will have an area right in between that is coming in. And this gray, if you see this gray here, that means that those are levels that have been hit and are continue, still uh, holding uh, prices. So this is the demand side that hit, and now this is also um, the uh, supply side that hit. So you can see anything that was inside of here was actually inside of those two ranges. So if we're looking at the fresh area now, that's still coming up above with these two levels on top of each other coming in at 30.002 to 30.34 uh, to 30.81. Now down below, we are going to have a gap that I believe is gonna be coming in right around a little bit more data. Uh, where is it? All right, let's go and take a look. We're going to be having a gap right around uh, this. So it's coming in at 2846. So what you will see is that at this gap area where, so we are quite a bit higher than that right now, but back down at the gap, we have tested down below uh, a few times. So I will go a little bit below the gap if it were to come back closer to the 2838, 2830. The gap's gonna be right about at that 2846.50. We could take a look at that on the SPY. So you can see the SPY will be above the 30 minute now. Has the gap going to be coming in at 286.25? And then the above zone is going to be at the 316 to 308. So that is going to be uh, the first area that's going to test that's going to come in line with that SP uh, ES at the 3000 mark. Let's go to the NASDAQ. So inside of the NASDAQ, we have the uh, same scenario in which uh, where we have the inside levels coming up higher. We are going to get into a couple of areas. One is going to be the gap that's, uh, that is going to hit first and then these two levels on top of each other. That's going to come in at 95.52 to 95.64, I believe. And then oh, let me open this up a little bit more. 95.84 and then 96.05 to 96.44 with those two levels on top of each other. One thing I am uh, also going to be watching out for you know, the NASDAQ, of course, has always uh, been the strongest market with technology behind it and, and not a big impact uh, with it, it actually helps, you know, with everybody staying home uh, and all it, it actually helps this um, this overall market. But one thing I am going to be watching out for for the time to come is really uh, the semiconductors, which can have a, an impact on the NASDAQ in general, because if it is going to have any sort of sell-off, that is going to be the market. And what I'm going to be watching in particular uh, is this area right here. Let me just see if I find it. All right. So I did group them out a little bit, not necessarily uh, in this week or whatever, but it is going to be on my watch list. So you can see the PHLX, uh, the semiconductors, uh, looking at a, a few of them, Micron, Qualcomm, 
uh, applied materials, Broadcom. Uh, this is a, uh, I believe, a Taiwanese semiconductor. Uh, with all that's going on with the, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, Huawei and um, and the uh, accusations and and with um, the China president going to the WHO and and all that these markets uh, are being impacted. And so those will be ones on watch uh, because those will be the ones that if it's gonna get affected, uh, be affected the most. So um, just keep that in mind, uh, Apple and the Nikkei also, uh, if anything should happen uh, during this time with it. So there is a lot of tension going on at the current moment, but right now we are, uh, rallying overall on stimulus, uh, continued stimulus, um, you know, uh, expectations. But these markets are ones to watch uh, going forward for a little bit uh, coming in the next uh, week or two or so. All right, let's go back. Okay, so you can see where uh, the gaps are going to be coming in with the NASDAQ too as well. So the one thing I did see was it looked like the gap to me uh, was tested once before. Didn't quite test very deeply into it. So I was still looking at it again. That's coming in at 90.94.75 to 90.69. And then the lower areas where I see uh, it not being tested yet, which is coming in at 90.31 to uh, 90.13. inside of the queues. So those areas on the queues are gonna be, uh, the fresh area is gonna be coming in at the 20, uh, 220, 50 to the 220. Right now you are gonna have a gap that's gonna be coming at the, in at the 223, uh, 28 area. And then of course, with that upper zone, uh, the 240 zones coming in closer to the 229 uh, to the 235 inside of the queues. Uh, small caps, you can see once it starts to get moving, it really starts to pick up some steam. And now we are getting almost back into where our previous uh, area that we dropped from. So we already tested this area twice. So I would be careful on this one. The upper one, um, that would actually still be one of those brown areas. Uh, well, this would be actually one of those brown areas, uh, but that area you can see on the supply side, we have not tested back into um, the 1355, 1363. Just realize, look at where we are with this, right up into this uh, overall area. So the fresh zone is really coming in closer to the 1429. Up to the 1459. Then on the demand side, can see also we have a new demand that just formed, but we also have it down below at the 1245 to the 1234. Okay, so before we go into the other markets, since there is a little bit question of a different colors, I'm going to go to the yen just purely because I believe that may be able to explain a lot more with the color codes. So you can see the yen here. I thought that this would be a good example of the color codes. So let's start actually before we do that. All right, let's start with this picture right here. So Sam's going to uh, update the session guide for you. For, for those of you that's been with us, knows that uh, we've had a couple of different colors in terms of uh, the fresh the fresh levels that haven't been hit, retested levels, and the overnight levels. Added two more color codes right now. 
And you can see right from this picture, uh, at least the only one that's missing is kind of the overnight, but because this is the Forex market, there's really no overnight. So you can see where the, the, uh, the pressure levels uh, above and below current price, those are still gonna be remain in yellow. The gray levels inside are the ones that have hit and we have moved back and forth in. So you can see that uh, this level up on top on the supply side, as well as this level down below on the demand side. A lot of times these levels can work again, you know, depending on, uh, you know, the, um, the situation, but you can see a lot of times they're ranging and they can work again. Now, moving down into some new colors, so you can see a little bit of a difference here. Again, this is gonna be the gray one where prices, we had this level and this uh, we have hit it and we have continued to fall. These you can see, the there actually should be brown, uh, where the browns are going to be the levels that are inside of the range. So this way you have a little bit of uh, a clue of, uh, you know, looking when you're looking at the levels, if they're inside of the range, outside of the range, so you can see that this area, these two areas have been inside the range. This demand level as well inside, inside of the overall range does look like you formed uh, two new little supply levels too, which they would also be in brown because the range is getting a little bit tighter, and but will would also be in brown too as well. So that's a little bit of the picture of the different color codes as we uh, continue to move on in these sessions. I pick brown because I figure, you know, yellow. So brown's a little bit more muted than yellow. So that kind of, I figure, uh, I figure that kind of makes some sense. But uh, anyway, uh, let's go back into. Oh, one thing I did want to mention with the uh, the white, uh, the um, the the uh, Russell is this. This whole area and uh, that is coming back to is coming off of this whole area, right? So if we take a look at that spot that we're taking a look at where the RTY is coming back to right now, that is right inside of this, okay? So just so you know, that is why it's considered more of a brown spot because this is not a fresh uh, overall zone. So I just figured I'd pull up the IWM to show you uh, because that is the levels that we had that uh, prices started to fall. And now it's created that where we are coming back to. So not a fresh area in terms of that. With the YM, uh, you could see still quite a bit of ways from its upper 240. Um, it will have to get through some of the 60 minute zones to, to get there. So let's go take a look at that. At the current moment, it is hitting the previous five minute zone that we've been at for uh, quite some time. On the 60, this area actually should also be more of a brown color. as we get back to the 24, 576, 24, uh, 718. And then the upper zones would really be where you come in. So circle is overnight, and this is uh, where you get into the fresher areas. So that's coming in at this uh, 20, let me open this up a little bit. Oh, we can't. 20, I believe 26, 26, a little bit above 26,000 to 26,255 to 26,629. You can see it on the 60 minute chart right above your little gap here. I believe on the Demand side, uh, we just just barely missed this zone, which is a 23.205 to 23.142 on top of a smaller time frame zone that's coming in at 22.840 to 
All right, now let's go take a look at the bonds. So you can see what's happened with the bonds. We have hit down into a little bit of demand, formed a little bit of supply up on top. So it is, I believe, suggesting at the current moment with the inverse markets that we do have some uh, close supply up above. And now we're just waiting for the inverse markets to kind of take out these closer demands and then you would have some supply. So that's still suggesting a little bit more stock market uh move higher so we'll have to keep a watch on this as we hit into some of these closer demands if we still stay in here during the open we could have a, a bounce back from uh these zones at the moment we still have some we still have some time before the open so you, you're going to watch out for the upper uh supply now too and that would be currently in a blue circle that would mean to look out for a possible formation For the 30 year, same thing, came down and hit a little bit of this uh, demand area, but then was met by, so this was the blue circle a little bit earlier on because I saw it, uh, I saw it hovering right above this area, but now you can see uh, we have started to fall. So it did take one pull back into this zone already. And now you can see we have started to uh, continue to fall and back down uh, again if you take a look at this it's not too surprising uh that we are if you really say what's going on with the bond market not a whole lot the only thing is that the uh, 30 year is uh lower a little lower than the uh, two and five year but in terms of what it's really done in the last uh few days you can see it's really um hasn't done uh, a whole lot uh, in direction wise. So not giving us a huge help in, in our uh, market direction. Okay, so with CL, uh, very nice move off of the lows. Now you can see we have a 240 zone. We have a 240 zone coming in at 2674 to 2566. 240 upper zones, you can see where that's coming in, these two zones on top of each other. Which is a little bit closer to that 46 mark. You are going to fill the gap a little bit before that on the 60 minute. And you can see on the 60 minute, that's going to be coming in first at the 41.85 to 42.75 and then 43.42 to 44.68. Uh, some of you will notice you have, do have some uh, overnight five minute zones that's been hitting, but has slowed down a little bit. But you can see you do have a couple of overnight five minute zones that uh, for those of you that's doing a little bit of that intraday trade, you may be taking them in terms of uh, taking uh, a little bit of um, profits off of them. One thing I will mention is it does look like there is, so we're all the way up at 3193, which is showing us a little bit of a gap coming in at 29, 2911 to 2824. That gap area. I uh that gap area is coming in. Let me show you on the 30 minute. That gap area is coming in inside of these two levels right here. So right now you can see how much we have rallied uh since it closed on Friday. And these two levels on the 30 minute is where this gap is approximately at. So you can see right here, the first one starting at 29.43 to 28.98. And the second one is at 28.80 to 
you know, if you remember, this is coming off of our overnights, 30 minute zones, it went down and hit the second area. But then you can see since then, uh, we have continued to uh, rally all the way up to, so that was down all the way down at the 2570 mark. And now it's we're all the way up at the uh, 3202. Uh, let's take a little look at gold. Gold has been just showing a little bit of uh, weakness at the current moment, but you can see the general picture of what gold is showing us. If we take a look at this on the day session charts, uh, it looks like it is trying to head back towards right up at this highs here, right? So we don't have a lot of fresh uh, supply areas for gold at the current moment. Uh, we are basically going to be retesting. Um, you can see up at this 1766 to 1772. Currently, you have this large um, demand area sitting right below it at the 1753 to 1741. Uh, you can look for some small time frames inside of there if you want to uh, play it back and forth. But this is, it looks like it's getting a little bit tighter between the two sides um, at the moment with gold. It's still within our overall, if you, if you take a look overall, um, you can see these highs to the uh, demand. So it's still within a, a very large a uh, very large overall range if you take a look at it. Uh, with net gas, uh, we've had these two levels on top of each other. It looks like it came in and hit the first area. So right now you do have the opposing little bit of demand right down at the opposing um demand but you can see if it can get through that uh zone it can try to come back to if it can get through there try to come back to the next area which would be the 1666 uh, so you can see the first one yesterday's high around the 1730 mark and then down at the 1666 The other markets you want to watch out for, so copper's in between uh, these two zones on the 60 minute currently. It's showing good strength along with the stock market. It, if I want to say anything, so what I mentioned before uh, with the overall, either the semiconductors or the, uh, or the overall, uh, the hearing in front of the WHO, um, if anything's going to affect those uh those markets it should affect also the aussie of uh, copper and and all those markets too so if you do come into some supply zone with those markets if you can match up these markets uh with that because they're all kind of correlated together so you can see when we have a pretty decent uh stock market and and, and good good going on in asia uh, you'll typically have that also in the aussie and in copper so right now you can see some uh, demands forming uh, with them uh, as you continue to move up, just like the equity markets. Uh, but you can see down below, we do have this uh, five minute up at the uh, 23,579 to 23,555. Uh, okay, let's take a little bit look at the uh, dollar. So the dollar is actually not showing us uh, a whole lot at the current moment. What it has done is, so the only tricky part with the smaller time frame areas with the uh, currencies is you can see the dollar pretty much held this area uh, perfectly, uh, but the euro had to test out a little bit. So remember, even though it is inverse, so when it comes to the smaller time frame, what's going to make it difficult is because the euro represents uh, less than 60% of the dollar. So it can move a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the dollar. So it's not going to be a perfect uh, 
inverse correlation. But it, uh, in terms of the euro, it's stuck between the two levels. With the dollar, you can see uh, it's hanging up at this, um, this same area, but not showing us much um, strength either as it's still within this area here. Okay. So you want to remain somewhat careful with, with that because you can see that we are still having a kind of non-direction, but the dollar can get very quiet um, as, the, at the, as the stock market rallies, right? So the dollar can remain in a bit of a range bound mode as the stock market uh, continues to rally. You can see the volatility picks up once you have a stock market move um, uh, in the other direction. But once it once the market calms down, the dollar calms down. So you can see with the euro, that's what we what we have had. We have had a move off of our 15 minute demand zone. Um, you can see a little move off of that 15 minute supply zone. And now uh, that's but then remember, too, that's overall coming from uh, this uh, 240 zone. So if I want to say anything, you know, the 240 zones, you can still keep it in play. The 15 minute zones are going to be still inside of this whole big range. So it's not going to be as high quality. And the lower demand zones, we've hit uh, one or two times already. So it is in a very, very tight range. So the euro, I would say, if, especially if you are trying to do that lower uh, time frame, you want to be a little bit more careful with the euro. The Aussie. Uh, Remaining strong with the overall stock market, still below our 240 zone. So I would say that would be the one caution with it all, as, as Sam pointed out. If we're really that strong and the dollar is that weak, shouldn't we ra be rallying a little bit more? So that's something to still uh, keep in consideration. But as far as right now, um, not a whole lot going on except that uh, our higher zone now is going to be up closer to the 6843. Uh, to the 6665 up to the 6887. That's where you're going to come into your fresher uh, supply zones and the fresher demand zones coming in at 6236, 6197. Those of you looking for a little bit of day trading, looking at a little five minute area, just be careful in terms of what new demands that form with it. But there is a little five minute area from the previous session that's coming in at 6490, 6499. All right, so for the pounds, not quite down uh, to our uh, 240 minute zone. The only thing I was looking at was we've had a couple of hits off of supplies already. So meaning we've had the 240, then it pulled back once, it pulled back to another area, then it pulled back to another area on top of pulling back to our 15 minute area. So even though we do have, you can take a look at this zone, but I don't think it's as high quality anymore. This has been uh, numerous. The upper zone, you can still keep in mind, 123.59, 123.73. This one may be limited, could be for very quick trades, but uh, it's, I believe it's gonna be limited in terms of uh, profits uh, on these close uh, supplies at the current moment, given, um, given how many supplies we've already moved down on. It did the yen, and I believe the other one was the Swissy. The Swissy, as you can see, same thing, still in a big range mode. So you can see these are actually, uh, well, they should be brown colored. Uh, it'll be more brown next time. But it'll be more brown color because this is inside of these two ranges where we've hit on both sides, as you can see, the gray colors, right? And now we've also hit up into uh, the 15 minute zone as well as we start to rally back up. So again, nothing of gray quality inside of there, but just little, little trades moving back and forth. And the last one is going to be 
uh, the Kiwi, uh, Kiwi too, as well, uh, very much impacted a little bit weaker than the overall stock market, but will move with the Aussie dollar and, and the rest of the market. So, uh, it does have a little bit of supply coming up a little bit higher at 6072 to 6123, but overall within, um, you can see where the really fresh area is still uh, a little bit further out on the two sides as well. Okay, so uh, that is it for today and we will continue to make these sessions better for you. And uh, it was great seeing all of you here and great to have Sam back. So have a great day, everyone.